The examination of the oral mucosa is a specific examination which requires a systematic approach. This systematized structure for examining the mucosa will be set out in these training materials. As an introduction, the diagnostic objective of the oral cavity examination is the identification of basic lesions. These basic lesions may be described as changes in colour or changes in volume. The second step is to link these basic lesions to an etiology. The major etiological factors are inflammatory, immune, traumatic, tumorous and infectious. More rarely, some genetic diseases or idiopathic forms may be expressed in the oral mucosa. Finally, the possibility of diseases or syndromes whose symptoms may include oral mucosa lesions should be borne in mind. The tools required for the examination of the oral mucosa are mirrors and tongue depressors. Generally, the two mirrors or two tongue depressors are used to facilitate taking photos. Gauze is an essential element to dry the mucosa and to immobilise the muscular surfaces, especially the tongue. Finally, lighting is certainly the most important point regarding this oral mucosa examination. We now use surgical lighting systems equipped with LED lights which provide a light source that is suitable for clinical examination. To complement the clinical examination, a biopsy is often taken which is analysed in the anatomical pathology laboratory. The examination of the oral mucosa begins by examining the lips. The external surface of the lips is represented by a cutaneous covering which extends towards the vermilion border, which is a transition zone between the mucosa and the skin. This labial zone is lightly keratinized, which gives it a whitish color. This keratinized zone forms a protective layer for the lips. The intraoral examination of the oral mucosa must be systematized. This systematization has been theorized in the form of different circles. An external circle, an internal circle, a lingual and oropharyngeal circle, and a circle involving the ventral phase of the tongue. The first circle, the external circle, involves the analysis of the lips and gingivae. The mucosa of the lips is non-keratinized, so it has a pink color that is different to the vermilion zone of the lips. Deep to the superficial part of the mucosa, there is a group of small nodules that represent minor salivary glands, which can give the internal surface of the lips a bumpy appearance. The presence of gingivae is noted surrounding the teeth. These comprise the marginal gingiva, which surrounds the neck of the teeth like a collar, then the attached gingiva, which is a little lighter. It is the gingival element that is attached to bone. Between the gingivae and the labial mucosa, there is a lining mucosa which forms the mucosa of the vestibule. The external circle continues with the examination of the cheeks. The examination of the retrocommissural zones involves the most posterior part of the cheek which terminates at the intermaxillary commissura. The mucosa of the cheeks is a non-keratinized mucosa which contains significantly fewer minor salivary glands than the labial part. The internal circle begins with the examination of the anterior part of the floor of the mouth, which is marked by the presence of the principal excretory ducts of the submandibular gland, 
also known as Wharton's duct, which open onto either side of the lingual frenulum. The presence of significant underlying vascularization can be observed in the anterior part of the floor of the mouth. This is visible because of the thin lining epithelium. The examination of the internal circle must also involve the gingiva that is related to the teeth. It is important to conclude this examination by visualizing the posterior part of the floor of the mouth. The presence of the tongue can make this examination difficult, so it must be immobilized with gauze or a tongue depressor as shown on the slide presentation. It is important to examine this area of the floor of the mouth as squamous cell carcinomas often arise here. The internal circle also involves the maxilla. The anterior part of the maxilla will be singled out. This is made up of papillae, a central papilla, which is the incisive papilla, and the papilla of the palate, which can be noted perpendicular to this papilla. In the superior part of the palate, the mucosa is often slightly depressible and yellowish as a result of the presence of underlying fat. The minor salivary glands are sighted in the posterolateral part of the palate. The lingual and oropharyngeal circle begins with the examination of the dorsal surface of the tongue. Numerous whitish papillae, known as filiform papillae, can be observed on the dorsal surface of the tongue. Amongst the filiform papillae are red papillae, known as fungiform papillae. More posteriorly, there is a system of large papillae, known as circumvallate papillae, which form the V of the tongue. The uvula can be observed in the central part of the oropharynx and bilaterally the palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arches. The palatine tonsils can be identified between these two arches. The lingual tonsils, which are often sighted very posteriorly, are hard to see. They can just be seen on the photo on the right behind the lingual V. The examination of the ventral surface of the tongue is dominated by the presence of a non-keratinized mucosa. The lingual veins can be seen through the thin epithelium, forming a venous network on either side of the lingual frenulum. At the edge of the lingual veins, the presence of papilla around the ventral surface of the tongue can sometimes be observed. The examination of the oral cavity finishes by examining the border of the tongue highlighting a circumvallate papilla belonging to the lingual V, hypertrophy of the foliate papillae and foliate papillae which sometimes appears as simple whitish striations which are not visible on this tongue. Do not forget to examine the floor of the mouth, which here is marked by the presence of rich vascularization. Finally, a biopsy is frequently taken to supplement the clinical examination. Mucosal biopsies are similar to cutaneous biopsies. They can be performed with a scalpel or a punch tool. This incisional biopsy will take samples representative of the different aspects of basic lesions. The biopsy fragment must be oriented. To do this, we recommend placing it on a sheet of paper to which the connective tissue element of the biopsy will adhere. This sheet of paper with the biopsy will be placed in a formalin fixative. The clinical information relating to the lesion will be communicated to the anatomical pathology laboratory which will embed, section and stain the tissue. 
classically a mucosal fragment, will display an epithelium with a keratinized or non-keratinized surface, with connective tissue in its deep part. Vessels are only present in the connective tissue element, which gives the oral mucosa its pink colour. <laughs>